Grand Rising, my friends. Hey there, welcome to the most beautiful subscribers. And there's more of us now, there's more daily in several known dimensions battling amongst all of existence at this point. If you're new here, hey, um, f fall in, find a place, get a seat, you know, t sit around, be, feel free to ask questions, go along your path, you know. Uh, well, uh, markets, Bitcoin down to 46,214, but a little bit brighter in the last hour. Um, what can you say? I mean, you know, we see where the resistance is at. We knew resistance was around 47, 48, 47, uh, you know, trending this way. Well, you know, it'll break at one point. Now the new year, you know, stock market, we'll get to it in a second. It might as well hurry. Let's hurry up. Uh, Ethereum at 3,805, Binance 509. Cardano is not having a bad day today, to be quite honest. To be quite honest. Uh, Solana 168, Cardano 132, Terra 85, Avalanche 104, Doge almost 17 cents, Shiba Inu 4032. Polygon, $2.38. The stock market is having its best, its highs. The S&P and the Dow has had, in the past several days, has had highs, is all-time highs. So we are seeing money is flowing through the markets. And, you know, the, apparently, and that's what a lot of, I, I'm starting to see that pattern every year, is that people tend to sell a lot of um unless they're being forced to through like um last year uh bitcoin was in a bit of a, a pump during december but a lot of people take profits try to you know get ready for their tax strategy going into the next year so then this year you imagine they would come in january going hard trying to get a, a get in on the deals Futures are looking down tomorrow for the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ. But the Dow had an all-time high today, if I'm not mistaken. i double-check with it. Pretty certain about that. Ethereum continues to burn over $5 billion, almost $1.4 million Ethereum. And that will push the price up. Over time, and the same thing with the, the Bitcoin, that people don't see any or you know, people understand, a lot of people understand, but a lot of people, when they first get into it, that there's a finite number, and when it disappears off the exchange, and you'll see Whale well Watch where it'll go to wallets off of Coinbase or Binance or two uh, Bifinex, you know, is the market can be tracked, so it's not like it's anonymous. Well, it can be anonymous in that sense. You might not know who owns that wallet, but you can see the activity of the wallets. Here on this channel, we'll hear about that positivity. And one day this will not be in vain. <laughs> not that it matters in a sense, which is there's somebody in your life that motivated you to be a better human being, a better person. You know, write some kind about them down in the comment section and forward them this video and say, hey, look what I wrote about you on the Internet. It'll last for eternity. I love you. <laughs> we don't mind saying love because here on, on this channel, we practice that spiritual fitness, which is knowing that the, the people in our lives who, who do have meaning, we have they know how we feel about them, you know. Um, there's going to be good days and bad days and arguments, but we're not going to let that build over time. We're going to correct those misunderstandings or, or disagreements and find, you know, some compromise and on a, on a, on a daily basis, make sure that people in your life know how you feel about them. And, um, yeah. So with that moving on, <clears throat> MicroStrategy CEO outlines potential 
ways to generate yield, quote unquote, from the company's Bitcoin holdings. Now, this is I mean, look. Mr. Saylor has mentioned this multiple times in the past. So what do you do with pristine assets, which is you never sell them, you take out loans against them. And then over time, they generate more interest. They generate more than the interest on the loan. <laughs> to date, MicroStrategy, and this is off a little bit. They've had some more. I think they added like 124000 now. I may be mistaken. And now the company is looking at potential ways to, quote unquote, generate yield from those holdings, according to CEO Michael Saylor. While Saylor stressed that we have not quite taken any formal steps yet, he expressed a really enthusiastic about the opportunity and what he said. And I'm going to go through and read um, and I'm not going to do my Michael Saylor uh, impersonation, but uh, I'd rather listen to more of it. I to, he, Sometimes he'd be like, uh, we think that in uh, I got, I'm not gonna, we think that in the future, there may be an opportunity to put a mortgage against it and generate long term debt under favorable circumstances, which we could <laughs> leverage up against the Bitcoin. Or we think we could lend it to a trustworthy counterparty. And when we find the counterparty that we trust in the circumstance we trust, we might lend it out and generate yield. Or the third possibility we put in some kind of partnership we can think of as putting a lien on it. If we did a partnership with a big tech company or or a big bank or some other player that really wanted that access to that Bitcoin that could become a good source of income for us. So they're going to keep inquiring and see ways that they can use it to generate you, which, you know, already been game changer in terms of micro strategy, taking Bitcoin on his treasury, but now showing that you can use your treasury assets to generate yield. A, if, you know, if other companies are not using whatever treasury assets they've been using to generate yield, they'll be looking at that. Then they'll be saying, well, what can generate the most yield? And, you know. Working group meets to prepare regulations for cryptocurrencies in Russia. Now, Russia has been, you know, <clears throat> now the information we get could be propaganda. Take that with a grain of salt. But it's been from hey whatever you want to do to the only people who can own it um are the officials you know like you know basically would be our elected officials in this country i'm not even sure elected or government officials federal officials that, you know so it's been weird but now they're saying the crypto working group has held its first meeting in its parliament russia's parliament its members have been tasked to put forth legislative proposals designed to comprehensively regulate cryptocurrencies and related matters in the russian federation so they're just saying they're meeting to discuss while well, cryptocurrencies were partially regulated with the law quote on digital financial assets quote which went into force in January, a range of related activities and aspects remain outside its scope, including crypto trading and taxation. Wonder what it was about then. So, not, you know, this is just saying the article is that they're meeting now to discuss. It doesn't give any uh, concrete plans or anything. You have, um, then they give quotes from different officials. This one guy, Says something that, I, you know, I'm not going to say I did not like, but I did not like. The money authority have maintained a hardline stance, consistently opposing their use in payments and calling them money surrogates, quote unquote. We don't see a place for cryptocurrency in the Russian financial markets. The deputy chairman, it doesn't say of what, though. I don't know what the money authority is, but the deputy chairman, this guy, said that, you know, but everyone says that initially and then you know what happens. They they laugh at you, they mock you, they attack you, then you know, they work for you. I forget how to quote go, but it's simple that's long those lines. <laughs> I'll look it up after this. FDA approves new eye drops that could replace glasses for millions. I always forget that I can um, pause in real time and it's a um Gandhi Gandhi quote that states First, they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. And I mean, hey, you know, you do see it happen over time with a lot of things. FDA approves new eye drops that could replace glasses for millions. So there's people who are farsighted. And here you can look a little bit of how it would improve an individual's vision. 
but it only lasts six to ten hours. Costs about eighty bucks for a month's supply, and insurance companies don't want to pay for it because glasses are cheaper. And for the most part, they can care less about you. Don't ever forget that. So, and it's not necessarily people who work for them. They're just somebody who has a job and go in and have a script of what they're told to do. They, if you call them, they probably be like, "Bet, of course, I'll authorize that for you." But you know, they have an algorithm that tells them no. Did they say this? Did they say this? Did they say this? The answer is no. Not not as right or wrong, you know. It's just that you know exactly how the world works. Some people, you know, when they get angry at the individual, like the, you know, the person on the other end of the phone that made that decision, they didn't make that decision. <laughs> I'm sure they'd be like, I don't care. Who cares? Yeah, I mean, what you need these drops? You know, they probably be like, hey, can't you take some drops to make it where you don't need them all or take them once a day? You know. They're probably trying to help you uh, any way they can. That's what I think about most human beings. But this is um, actually pretty good if you're so if you're farsighted, there may be an alternative besides the glasses if you you know are willing to um, spend the drops are called beauty, 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 and they receive the FDA approval. So something to look out. That's awesome. I mean, look, we we all about. And, you know, knowing that we know what <clears throat> my thought is. If we have, you know, this is kind of like a, a quick fix, a Band-Aid for a problem. We know that the the eyeballs as individuals get older, get stiffer. And these drops make them a little bit more elastic where they can bend a little bit more so you can see better. Right. Why not just. You know, go to the source. So that's just a band aid to a problem. The, 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 causing, a, you know, fixing it would go like, you know, like going back to the person who said, why don't we just fix it to where you don't need those drops? And that's where a lot of technology is going. But that, and I haven't been bringing up much of stocks lately, and I'm going to do some, I think, um, of my predictions about some stocks that I uh, follow heavily as well. That you know, some companies about to do some amazing things. Don't forget that we can get stuck off into making this money in other ways, but it's it, people are about to really change how the world works. Speaking of which, like even before the FDA getting approval for that company, it wasn't enough. Finally, a fusion reaction that has generated more energy than absorbed by the fuel. Now it's a lot of a lot of long words, and what is this basically? And I'm gonna kind of say it. Um, you know, in a way that it should be kind of simple and then go a little bit more complex. We're basically trying to get the energy of a star on Earth to power things. And the smaller and tiny we can do it and keep it contained, but get the energy out of it, the better. Because it should burn pretty relatively clean, no, no waste products like nuclear fuel or most things. It's like the ideal energy solution. If we can get it to work, boom, we in there, we in there. So what we have been able to do at the United States scientists at the National Ignition Facility, if you pay taxes, you can claim um, some credit on this. You know, you know what I mean? Like you may have cooked the food, but, but you know, but who paid for it? You know, who brought it? Who, who, who brought it home? So they took some elements, some tritium and um Tritium and um, I can't say that uh, butchering in my head now, but basically isotopes of hydrogen um, and bombarded them with lasers, a bunch of lasers, heating them up, flash heat them today, supposedly, or the, the planets that can produce a plasma, which then and, and all of this is being controlled inside a magnetic containment unit. Basically, you know, float, kind of floating in what we would consider an air, but magnetic fields are keeping it in a specific place. You know, powerful magnets are pushing on it at different angles all around it to keep it all centered. And when this boom, the lasers hit it and boom, it heats. Eventually, this will ignite and, you know, create like a baby star that, that gives power. Um, and we've actually now we've been able to do that for a while. And now they've hit it in so using this inertial confinement fusion 
involves creating something like a tiny star. It starts with a capsule of fuel containing deuterium and trinium, heavy isotopes of hydrogen. The fuel capsule is placed in a hollow gold chamber about the size of a pencil eraser. Call it hollow, 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 hollow. Harum, I don't I'm gonna butcher that. Harum, so it's tiny. And like I said, so they got in there, but even that, so long and long and short of it, they put in 1.9 megajoules and got out 1.8. But when you factor in what was wasted on the laser, so the lasers have to hit the gold and turn in the x-rays to hit it. I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but the there's wasted energy and a lot of the steps so what what was calculated to actually have gone into the element and then that was produced out afterwards was more so we're moving in the right direction a lot of this you know what's the importance because this was go power our civilization you know i don't believe i talked about the carter chef scale here carter chef it's a Russian last name, and it talks about, you know, we as a, as, a, as as humans are able to take energy from parts of the planet right now and a little bit a part of like, you know, our solar system via solar right at this moment. A Kardashev one civilization has complete control over the energy on their planet, thermal energy, wind um a uh, title any form of energy can be completely harnessed by a type 1 civilization type 2 completely harness all the energy in their solar system all the different planets there the sun you know it, so it talks about the steps that humanity and any civilization any intelligent sentient life will travel on if they live long enough. And that's what Elon Musk and them will be about, why we have to prepare to have humans spread across different planets because all all bunched up in one place, we one big target at the end of the day. And you can say, but, 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 and that's silly thinking. And that's what we're gonna talk about is that, you know, it, it's sometimes about, well, why take the chance? You know, yeah, theoretically, there shouldn't be an, a mass extinction event on our planet in our lifetime, you know, or in the lifetime of our children, our children's children, or into a hundred generations. But why take that chance? <laughs> you know, that becomes way off topic. Um, just awesome to see the United States still, and, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I have a story kind of where China has done something similar, maybe even more. I can't remember exactly. I was reading, I, you know, I didn't think at the point I understood how this had, it was less energy that went into, you know, besides the lost energy that actually came out. So I have to look at um, the, the data that was put out in the other story. But we'll get to that another time with that. I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.